Hello everybody, my name is Borislav Panofsky. I'm the founder of rafting team Reflip. We're part of the Bulgarian Rafting Federation. We're here in the beautiful Presna Gorge on the Struma River in Bulgaria. We're making those videos for rafters, river runners and people with all kinds of professions that want to learn more about the river. We're gonna start with basic things like equipment, rafts, currents. As we go further in the videos, we're gonna show you swimming techniques so you can safely swim in swift water. We're gonna show you paddling techniques so you can start your own team and join the big rafting community. We're gonna show you simple yet efficient rope techniques so you can help your friends. So fasten your life jackets and let's begin. This is a basic safety talk for everybody that wants to go rafting. It is mandatory before you go into the river. Everybody must be equipped with a helmet, life jacket, wetsuit and some shoes. Please ask your guide to fasten your life jacket. Usually they have two straps on the side and two on the lapels of the life jacket. Your helmet must be strapped here underneath. This shouldn't go above your chin. If the strap goes above your chin, you're gonna lose the helmet. Our weapon of choice is the paddle. It has a blade, a shaft, and the T-grip. We hold the T-grip like this, one finger underneath, four on top, and we hold the shaft about 20 centimeters or seven inches from the blade. We sit on the main tube of the raft with our feet strapped into the straps. Every boat in Europe is designed with boot straps so you can use them so you don't fall out of the boat. Always hold on for the T-grip. If you let go of the T-grip, that can become a weapon and you can hit people around you. So you always hold it and you can use your other arm to hold with the rope, pick your nose, do whatever you want, okay? If we have a rock or another boat, we never try and poke it. The boat is really heavy with all the people inside. We're more than half a ton. So this move, we won't be able to poke and we can hit somebody again. So if you have a rock or another boat, lift your paddle up in the air and let the boat hit it. It's fine. I'm gonna explain the paddling commands now and the paddling strokes. When you paddle forward, you must remember to keep your hands slightly straight, not close to the body, away from the body. Imagine you have a beach ball here in front of you and you always want to keep that distance. Paddle is vertical. You want to lean forward, plant the blade into the water and then lean back. And you need to repeat the move. Lean forward, lean back, lean forward, lean back okay when your guide says go forward or paddle forward you must lean forward everybody must paddle together as one it's not about how strong you are it's all about paddling at the same time when you hear the second command stop you want to put the paddle on the hip blade outside of the water your third command is back paddle Paddle backwards. You want to keep your paddle on the hip like this. The lower arm just pushes it against the hip. Everything is done by the upper arm. You want to move it in the front, put the blade into the water, dig in. There is mixed commands. One side, right side paddles forward, left side paddles back. Your guys will explain that before you go into the river. If you have a command, branches, you need to lean back and put the paddle in front of you, protect your face. If you lean forward, a branch might go into your life jacket and take you outside of the boat. And some rivers, you may have a command, everybody in, then they'll make everybody go into the boat, and hold on for the ropes. So, we're gonna emphasize on safety right now. 
I have three scenarios for you. Our first scenario, you fall out of the boat and you end up really close to the boat. When you fall out, or if you fall out of the boat, first thing you should remember is don't panic. Panic is our number one enemy. Second thing, the life jacket will push you up. When you go up, orientate yourself. Is there a wave coming? Where's the boat? Where am I? If there isn't a wave, don't forget to breathe. That's the third thing. If a wave is coming towards you, hold your breath for a second. Let the wave pass and then breathe. And the fourth thing is self-rescue. Or you have to be proactive. What does it mean? When you're close to the boat, you have to catch the chicken line. This is called the chicken line. It is the rope that goes around the boat. When you catch it, you're halfway there. How do we get a person? How do we get a person in the boat from the water? We're gonna grab him by the lapels of the life jacket only. That is why the life jacket must be nice and tight. We don't grab him by the helmet, the hair, anything else, only by the life jacket. We're gonna give him a quick dunk. We're gonna count to three. Give him a quick dunk. One, two, three. Teach him a lesson and also use the extra buoyancy of the life jacket to help us. Then in one swift motion, we're gonna throw him inside of the boat. That is our first scenario, when we're close to the boat. Our second scenario, you fall out of the boat and you end up further away from the boat. Same rules apply, don't panic, orientate yourself, breathe, self-rescue. What does self-rescue means here? If you're swimming away from the boat into the river and we never try to walk, you can get your foot somewhere on the rock. So we always keep our feet up in front of us so we can see them. If we have a paddle, we hold the paddle for the teak rip, okay? We don't hold it in front of us. We don't hold the blade in front of us. The first wave that hits the blade can hit us in the mouth. So we always hold it here. If we need to swim, we swim with the paddle. If you can hold for the paddle is better. If the paddle is twisting your arm or something like that, you can let it go, the paddle floats. We always save the people first. This is number one rule as well. The body raft technique, it's called also, or defensive swimming position. You swim like this. If you wanna move to the left, you just put your head to the left and you swim back. This way the current will push you and it'll help you. We can use the paddle to help people and pull them into the boat. Give the T-grip like this. People can catch the T-grip, can pull them in. Don't give people the blade, okay? There's teeth marks and other stuff. It's slippery here, we don't do that. If you're more than two meters away, up to 15 meters, every one of the guys must have a rope on him or on the boat. When we're working with the rope, the rope should be nice, smooth, no knots, nothing. You should remember, we never do this or that. No necklaces, no bracelets, nothing. This is really dangerous. When you work with the rope, you should remember simple grip. If the rope starts to push, we cannot hold it. It hurts us. We can let it go. It's fine. When we throw the rope, we should always have eye contact with the swimmer. We shout really loud, swimmer, rope. When we see that the swimmer sees us, he can open his arms like this, okay? Then we have a bigger perimeter to aim at. Then we grab the rope and then we aim it at the, we throw it at the swimmer. He grabs it with a simple grip and then just puts it on his shoulder. And you're being towed with your head back to the boat. This way there's a nice air pocket here in front of our mouth and we can breathe. If we tow you like this with the rope in front of you, you won't be able to breathe, water will come into your mouth. So that was the second scenario when you're swimming a little bit further away from the boat. We use a paddle or a rope to get to you and you must know how to do defensive swimming position or body raft position. Third scenario, the 
boat flips. If the boat flips, same rules apply, nothing changes. We still don't panic, orientate ourselves, we breathe and we must do self-rescue or we have to be proactive. The only difference is that the guide is swimming there with you. If you end up underneath the boat, it's gonna be dark, but you'll be able to breathe, okay? It's not hell, it's not heaven, it's underneath the boat. Take a few breaths and come out. You should be able to see where you're going. It's really easy to reflip the raft. Now the raft is flipped, this is the bottom side. You just put two fingers in the holes and you push with your elbows. Almost every boat up to four meters and a half you can reflip like this. If you have a bigger boat, you need a flip one. We're gonna shout. Let go of the boat, let go of the boat. We need people to let go for a second so we can reflip the raft. Okay guys, that was it with our first introduction episode of Whitewater Rafting Education. To help us keep those series up, you can make a donation. For more information, see the link below. Stay tuned, have fun, and see you on the river.